Hi guys, welcome back to another lecture in our series called F5 LTM Concepts. Uh, well, uh, it's been quite a while since I created, created the last lecture on F5. Uh, but today we are going to discuss about virtual servers. Uh, if you remember, uh, in our previous sessions, we discussed about F5 nodes, F5 pools, uh, and also F5 modules. Uh, but if you haven't watched those uh, those lectures, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a link in the top right corner. You can click that and you can go and watch them. So today in this session, we are going to discuss about F5 virtual servers. Uh, now, WIP is, is a vital component of F5 big IP load balances. And it's a very important concept to understand if you're dealing with F5 big IP devices in your day-to-day -day jobs. So um, let's get started and see what we have. Okay, so a WIP on an F5 is represented by an IP address and a service port. For example, 10.10.10.100 uh, .10 which is for HTTPS. So this uh, represents a WIP IP. So the combination of an IP along with a port that makes up a WIP on an F5. It distributes traffic across a pool of servers that you specify in the virtual server configuration. So let's have a look at this diagram uh, and see what happens when the traffic comes on on an F5 WIP and how does it translate it to the backend servers. So the clients on an external network, they send application traffic uh, to virtual server. Uh, the virtual server listens for that traffic and uh, through destination NAT, uh, it translates and directs that traffic according to the way that you have configured the settings on the virtual server. So uh, the WIP on F5 uh, is actually sending client traffic to the load balancing pool uh, so that then therefore it becomes two-sided data transfer between the client and the server and the WIP is acting as a proxy for the external side. So for example, uh, in our uh, diagram, we have three servers at the back end, which we call real servers. So uh, we have given IPs 192.168, 5.100, 5.101 and 5.103 to these three servers. Now when the traffic comes from the outside, which is the uh, external of F5. Uh, so it hits the WIP IP. The WIP IP will check the mapping against it. Uh, so if it's mapped to, uh, to obviously it will be mapped to, to three different uh, nodes at the back end. So the first request it comes, hits the virtual IP, the virtual IP then picks up the pool member and the destination that the traffic to server one, which is 100, 5.100 in our case. Then the request, next request comes, the WIP again uh, denats denat that traffic to the second server at the back end, which is 5.101. Then the third request comes, the WIP then again uh, translates and directs that traffic, but this time to the third server at the back end. So in this way, the load balancing is done across all three servers. Now, this is uh, the basic mechanism for load balancing, which is a round robin. That is the first request comes in, hits the first server. The second request comes in, hits the second server. And the third request that comes in, hits the third server. But we may have different kind of load balancing mechanisms. We can do load balancing such as uh, based on the least number of connections, or uh, we can do load balancing uh, on other techniques that we will discuss in upcoming lectures uh, when we discuss the starting and dynamic load balancing and things like that. So, but the basic concept is that F5 WIP is acting as a proxy for the outside world. So when the, when the request comes in, it hits the WIP IP, the WIP IP then uh, translates that request and directs it to the backend real servers. Um, and the backend real servers, they see the WIP as the uh, client, so they don't see the external side. So the WIP acts as a proxy for these servers. So this is the basic concept for a standard WIP on an F5. So uh, we may have different types of WIPs on F5, but the most common one is the standard virtual server. But let's have a look at other types that we can configure on an F5 for a WIP or for a virtual server. Okay, so the first type of virtual server is the standard virtual server. Now, this is the most common type uh, of virtual servers on F5. Uh, it allows complete proxy service that we just discussed earlier and allows two-sided two data transfer between the client and the server. Um, 
F5 uh, suggests that you use standard virtual server under specific conditions. Um, for example, you can use a standard virtual server if you want an extra DDoS protection or maybe you want your big IPL team to make protocol application. Then the next virtual server type is the performance layer 4 virtual server. Now this virtual server comprises, and, uh, comprises a fast L4 profile uh, and uses the packet velocity ASIC, uh, you know, the application specific integrated circuit. Uh, so it uses that to increase the speed of packet processing. Uh, we use uh, this type of uh, virtual server when uh, there is going to be a process that requires uh, very little to non L4 to L7 processes. So the big IP system can make a port translation in addition to a source and target IP address translation. Since uh, the available L7 information is at the minimum, so load balancing decisions are also limited in scope. Then we have the forwarding layer 2 virtual server. This is also called the steering virtual server. It usually shares the same IP address with the node that exists in a related VLAN. Uh, then after that, we have another forwarding virtual server, but this is a forwarding IP virtual server. So this is uh, called, uh, this is not called only steering virtual server. This is called a steering IP virtual server. So what it does is it sends the packets directly to the target IP address. Uh, that means that this virtual server doesn't contain any pool member for load balancing. So it's, it gets mapped directly to the node addresses on F5. Now this type of virtual server is used when uh, configuring the process of the most common uh, packet steering, you know, the L3 routing. So it's used when you are configuring the uh, process of the most common uh, L3 routing. So we use the virtual uh, IP, forwarding IP virtual server. Uh, then we have uh, something called stateless virtual server. Uh, so this supports lowest packet processing and doesn't create connection flows. Uh, it only supports the UDP connections and uh, suggested when the condition connections are limited and certain. So we use a stateless virtual server. Then we have another virtual server that's called the reject virtual server. So it rejects the packets that can create new connection flow. Now this type of virtual server can block IP addresses and connection point that is included in steering and other wildcard virtual servers. So the next one is the performance HTTP virtual server. By the way, uh, this is where you configure all your virtual server types. So you go under local traffic on F5 and when you create a new virtual server uh, over here under the type drop down list, you can configure the type of the virtual server that you uh, need to configure it for. Uh, going back to the performance HTTP virtual server. So this virtual server uh, has a related HTTP, fast HTTP profile that is used to raise the processing speed of HTTP requests. So it can ensure the fastest way to send HTTP traffic uh, but under certain conditions uh, because performance virtual servers have certain requirements and limitations. So you only use it where you need the processing speed of HTTP requests to be increased. Otherwise, you don't use this server. Then we have uh, the DHCP virtual access server. And this transfers DHCP client requests to one or more DHCP server for an IP address. It provides DHCP server responses with an IP address that is available to the client. Then we have the internal virtual server. So it can create an ICAP and add request alerts or response adaption profiles from the virtual server. Uh, it uses ICAP, that, that is the Internet Content Application Protocol. So it uses that uh, protocol to change HTTP requests and responses. And lastly, we have the Message Routing Virtual Server. Uh, this uses the SIP protocol uh, to work. Uh, SIP protocol is the protocol for voice over IP. So it uses, it uses the session initiation protocol um, when you configure it on F5. So all in all, um, I would say that 90% um, of the time we, we configure the standard virtual server and that, that does the job for us. But if you have to configure any other type of virtual server, uh, you should make sure that you understand what, what is doing and what is the requirement for 
creating another type of virtual server that is not the standard virtual server so uh, this pretty much sums it sums it up and um, i would uh, say that um, if you have any questions or any feedback please feel free to drop your comments uh, and i would love to respond respond to them um, in the next session we are going to discuss about the static load balancing and the dynamic load balancing and i would also try to uh, include the difference between the inline configuration and the uh, snat uh, the auto map configuration on an f5 whip i hope this has been informative for you and i would like to thank you for your time take care see you next time bye bye